Anyone can record gameplay nowadays, but not many people can do it right. From pixelated to blurry videos, or from completely unbalanced audio to no audio at all. I'm going to show you the best settings for your recordings in OBS, so your videos look and sound amazing. But I'm also going to show you a secret technique that the biggest content creators use, and that is how you can record your game and webcam at the same time without burning your webcam into the footage, so you can edit them separately. Streaming and recording are two very different things. For example, when you are recording, you are not limited to Twitch's silly 6000 kbps bitrate cap. So the first thing we want to do is to download a clean slate. Go to the OBS website and click in the top right corner on download. Click download zip and once you've downloaded OBS, you are going to extract it. To make sure we don't copy any of the settings from your streaming OBS, Open the folder and make a new text document and call it portable underscore mode.txt. This file tells OBS not to check for any system settings, so you start completely from scratch. Once you've opened your OBS, open your settings and head into the video tab first. The base canvas resolution is going to be the resolution of your monitor. For me, this is 1440p. And the output scaled resolution is the resolution you want to record in. Normally I would suggest 1080p, but if you want to record in 1440p or 4K and you know your PC can handle it, then you can do that as well. If you are running a more budget friendly PC, you can also scale it down to 1280 by 720, which will save you a lot of resources for a minor quality loss. If your base and output resolution don't match, then you need to choose a downscale filter. Here you can just pick Langsos 36 frames, which will give you the best quality. And lastly, FPS. I know your instinct may be to put it to 144 or even higher. Don't do that. Usually you do not want to go any higher than 60 FPS. And if your PC is struggling, you can even set it to 30 FPS head into the output tab. Set your output mode to advanced and since we're not talking streaming today, open up the recording settings. If you do want to see a video about the best settings for streaming, then make sure to give this video a like and leave a comment with what platform I should make the video about. In the recording settings, choose a path. I suggest making a special folder called recordings or OBS recordings on one of your drives that you can easily find. For your recording format, you might be tempted to set it to MP4. But the problem is that MP4 has no crash protection. If your OBS crashes or you get a blue screen while recording, all your footage is gone, meaning you have spent hours of work for nothing. The better option to do is to leave it on .mkv, which does have this crash protection, but that does come with its own challenge. Editing software likes working with MP4. It doesn't like working with .mkv, but don't worry about that for now. I'm going to show you later on how you turn the MKV recordings into MP4 files. Recently, OBS has made a big announcement. Local transcoding is coming to OBS after an agreement with Twitch. So now more than ever, the encoder you choose for your videos matters. For most streamers, there are three options. H.264, X.264 and AV1. Depending on the graphics card you have, that is either NVENC or AMD HW, it doesn't really matter. In my case, I have an NVIDIA card, so it will be NVENC H264, which is the most used encoder in the world. The H264 encoder activates a special chip on your graphics card to encode your stream. This means you can encode with almost no extra strain on the graphics quality for your games. If you have an older graphics card that is really struggling with running your games, but a stronger CPU, then you might want to rely on that for encoding. In that case, you'll be using X264. The last one is AV1, and this is a newer encoder which is far more efficient, allowing it to get the same quality recordings with a far lower bitrate. This might be the encoder of the future, and it might become very interesting in a few months once Twitch starts supporting it, but for now, it is not clear if this is also going to help you get better recordings with the same file size. 
There's more science to be done with that one. So for now, unless you're watching from the far distant future, let's set it to NVENC H264. For your audio encoder, you can just leave it on FFmpeg AAC, but for the audio tracks, I want you to select them all. This is really important. An editor you will thank recording you. I'll show you why later in the video as well. Now scroll down to the encoder settings. You're probably a bit more used to this one because this is where you set your bitrate normally for streaming, at least if you use CBR. CBR stands for constant bitrate and it is this which Twitch caps to 6000. However, for recording, there is a much better setting, a setting that even the biggest streamers and YouTubers in the world use, CQP or constant quantization parameter. This doesn't record a specific bitrate every time because that can blow up your recording sizes. Instead, it makes sure that you have a constant quality depending on the CQ level. The lower, the better, but don't go too low. You won't notice the quality difference and the file size becomes huge. What I found is that 15 gives you a really good quality recording without the file size blowing up. However, if your PC starts to struggle, you can go all the way to 20 to reduce the pressure and still get a great quality recording. We can set the keyframe interval to two seconds and the preset to P7 best quality. Again, this is something you can play with a little bit. If your PC struggles, then simply set the preset to P6 or even P5. Okay, time for the lightning round. Set your tuning to high quality, multi-pass mode to two passes, full resolution, and profile to high. Leave look ahead off and make sure psycho visual tuning is on. Psycho visual tuning allows the encoder to look a few frames ahead and if an area doesn't change, then it will simply not render it again, making sure that your recordings become a higher quality at no cost to file size. As for the last two, leave GPU on zero and set the B frames to two. The question is, how do you know that your PC struggles? Well, there is the easy way and the right way. And since we are doing things right, in the docs menu, open the stats doc and you'll get greeted by a whole bunch of numbers, but we really only care about three, lagged frames, skip frames and drop frames. If you are just recording, then drop frames won't happen. These happen when your internet connection is not good enough or unstable. The other two, lag frames and skip frames, happen when your GPU is overloaded. When you see these happening, that is when you will want to go back and tweak some of your settings to lighten up the pressure on your graphics card. Next tab is the advanced tab, and this one is gonna be real quick. Scroll down to the recording section and check out the file size formatting. I really don't like the default version because it doesn't tell you anything except date and time. For me, it's much more important which day it was recorded on because I know what I recorded on a specific day of the week. I don't want to have to open my calendar each time to check if the date in the file corresponds to the day I know it was recorded on. So I just change it to this string. This will tell me the day, date, and then time in hours and minutes, but not seconds. Don't need the seconds. I will leave this string in the description below. And if you're down there anyway, why not hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell? That way you stay up to date with everything that we do. Make sure that overwrite if file exists is off. And if you expect to edit everything that you record, you can turn on automatically remux to MP4. This makes sure that once your recording ends, it takes that MKV file, which we use for safety, and changes it to MP4, which we will use for editing. If you don't want this to happen automatically or your PC crashed, you can also find a Remux button in the file menu. Simply load in the .mkv file and OBS will do the rest. Quick pop into audio to make sure that it is set to the right sample rate of 45 kilohertz, 45, 48, 48 kilohertz, and channels to stereo. Oh, and while you're there, make sure that your desktop audio is set to where your game is going to be playing from, and your mix auxiliary is set to the right microphone. We don't want you to have a really good streaming mic, but then be streaming from your headset mic or the one built into your camera. This will make sure that once we sort this in a bit, the things you say and the game sound aren't on the same channel, which means you can change the volumes and edit them individually. If you want to 
separate out your game from your music, your Discord, etc. Then I've got a video about that as well, which I will link in the description below. That video will ask you to change some of the things here. So at that point, don't worry about these right now. Now we are going to click OK and head to our audio mixer. Right click the audio mixer and make sure it is in vertical layout. Then click the hamburger menu and go into the advanced audio properties. Once you do this, you will see a whole lot of different boxes with different track numbers. Here is where you choose what audio goes to which track. And here's how I always set it up. On track one, I wanna disable everything except my microphone. On track two, you do the same thing, except the only thing active is the game sound. If you have teammates in Discord, then set them to track 3 and set your music to track 4. Anything else can go to track 5. Track 6 is your special track. It is your safety track. For track 6, you leave everything on. If there is ever a bug, then it's better to have a place with all the sounds than to miss out all your game sounds or your microphone. Remember, we don't want to spend time doing work with no results. But there is still one problem. The real pro content creators want to record their camera and their game separately, instead of having them burnt in together. That way you can edit them individually, zoom in on your game without losing your camera and give you all the flexibility for the best quality content. Luckily, there is a simple way to do this. Head into the profile menu and do duplicate the profile. Give it a name. I will call it separator recording. Open up your settings and head back into the video settings. Here you're going to double the width of your base and output resolutions. 2560 becomes 5120, 1920 becomes 3840 and 1280 becomes 2560. Then just click OK and you can see that your canvas has doubled in size. Instead of recording your game with a small camera, what you do is slide your game all the way to the left and slide your camera in full size to the right. Now, whenever you're editing, just copy the video track, crop your game track by 2560, 1920 or 1280 from the right and your camera track by the same amount from the left. Now you can edit them completely individually from each other without the mess of syncing up your audio tracks. Oh, and if you want to learn more about OBS, such as the five best OBS plugins that will help you improve your stream, then check out the video right here. And as always, stream better, stream smart.